Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number. Let's see, where's the where's where do we find the? Uh, the I know band? it's sixty seven. It, I it, do know it is sixty seven. I could put it on a band. I could. There, do there it is, right there. Look tech that. talk number sixty seven. Yep. There we go. All right. <laughs> Doing this a long time. Uh, we need your questions. With that's what we do here is we answer your questions on Home Voiceover Studios. And uh, we can only get those if you write them in the chat room and Jeff Holman writes them down and passes them on to us so we can ask them on our show. So stay tuned for all of that. Uh, it's Tech Talk number 67 on VoiceOver Body Shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together... From the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. How is that shot going to change when there's a pool back there? And, you know, <laughs> that's going to be interesting. <laughs> Maybe be we have different. to have a submarine in it. <laughs> That'd be different. Anyway, I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS Tech Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Tech Talk. Talk. I got my buttons back. Oh, good good to hear that. All righty. We're here to talk about your home voiceover studio or studios. You know, whether you're in a closet, in a booth, in a car, living room. What's that? (laughs) In a car, in a car, in a camper, in a trailer, in an RV. Yeah, we want to hear about those. Yeah, we get we have to get some pictures of people's studios again when we get back here in the studio. We're almost back there. Soon, That'd be fun. Yeah, I I, I miss those having other humans in here. Yes. So anyway, there's a thing about about a home voiceover studio. It is a totally unique environment to you because every voice is different. Every room is different and everybody's like, well, where do I put the panels? How do I do this? How do I do that? Every room needs to be custom thought out to you and to fit your lifestyle as a voice actor. And people don't think about that. They're Mm -hmm. like, well, I'll go on YouTube or I'll go on Google and I'll say, well, how do I build one of these? Yeah. They'd get some basic information about it, but you may end up making a lot of different mistakes because that person built their studio for them and their needs. Exactly. And they're experts in that one studio. Uh, their voice might be a little louder or a little deeper or something along those lines. And their budget and might've been four times bigger. That's also <laughs> a, a, a major, a major thought there. So, uh, anyway, that's what George and I do is we work with you individually. Yeah. We do our webinars and we, and we have our show here every week. And giving you all the right answers to your questions about your home voiceover studios. But we are professionals at home voiceover studios. There are a bunch of people say, yeah, I know a little bit about that. Or I've, you know, I helped uh, somebody build, you know, build their own. Nobody has built as many home voiceover studios as George Whittem and I. And uh, we look at each one of them 
We ask the right questions. We find out what's going to work for you. And that's how you get a studio that's going to work for you. And we're not going to let you use it until it sounds the way it's supposed to sound. That makes sense to you, George? <laughs> Absolutely. Whistle what it's supposed to sound like. <laughs> right. And there's a way it's supposed to sound like. And we know what that is. And it's not necessarily crunching it with all sorts of processing. Yes, we, you know, there are stacks you can put in there that will, will you know, make minor little corrections uh, to make sure that it sounds the same every time you record in there. But if you'd like to work with one of us and learn from the pros and get it right, George, if they want to work with you, where would they go? Well, you can head right over to my website, and that's georgethe.tech. That's my place on the web to uh, help you with all of your technical issues. Um, get a sound check. Yes, I have my own specimen cup. It's just called a sound check. Um, if you want to get your audio checked out for 25 bucks, um, I'll give you a bunch of notes on what I recommend uh, are things that need to be focused on or improved upon to get that sound, that magic sound. Um, of course, I can do processing presets for auditions. I can design total signal flows. I can teach you how to use your gear. I can design your acoustics, uh, and I can design your entire recording studio. Whatever you need, uh, I can help you out. And Dan has his place on the web in a different place, and that's called... HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. There it is. <laughs> yeah, go on over to HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. Uh, we're rebuilding the site now. It's going to look great because our friends at Voice Actor websites are getting it the way I want it. It's, it, I mean, it's great now, and the Specimen Collection Cup is there down at the bottom, but we're going to move that to the top, and then it'll be real easy to find, and then you can submit your MP3s to me of what your studio sounds like, and I mostly want it raw because I don't want to hear what all the processing that you're throwing into it because unless you really understand what it's supposed to sound like, Chances are, if you're using lots of processing to get rid of noise or to make your voice sound deeper or something along those lines, you're probably not using it right. Because as I like to say, you may like your audio, you might be trying to please your own ears, but you don't hire you. And I, you'd be amazed at how many people are not getting work because of the way they're over-processing their audio or they're not recording right. And that's something that it's very, very important to me. And that's that you get work because that's why we're doing this as voice actors. Yeah, it's fun being a voice actor, but it's more fun when somebody actually pays you to do it. So go on over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and send me your audio and let's see how we can make your stuff sound the way it's supposed to sound like. Whistle. Yeah. Whistle. That's right. So this week, uh, somehow you found some stuff to talk about <laughs> in your, in your tech update. What do you we know? Got? A lot of new gear came out, uh, you know, it came out in the last couple of weeks. So I kind of covered a lot of the new gear that I thought was relevant to you guys. So I have a few other random topics, but let's start off. I shouldn't bury the lead. The MacBook, the new MacBook pro was, was launched uh, by Apple and I was there watching it live excited to see what they had to offer and this was this was literally the day after we taped our last show the next actually it might have been the day of i can't remember um anyway so i i looked seriously into buying a macbook pro m1 14 inch for a cool two grand and you know i looked at it and it looked like a decent value for what its performance numbers were like which were pretty mind-blowing right the the new processor ha can handle more ram it's got more graphics cores, et cetera, et cetera. But the more I looked at it, the more I realized it's not the computer for me. And very, very likely it's not the computer for you if you're a voice actor. Here's what I mean by that. If you, if you really need a machine that has capabilities that maybe aren't something you need now, but you want to be able to be able to do in the future in a couple of years from now, and those capabilities I mean are shooting and editing in 8k super high resolution video um working in prores formats that are used for professional productions rendering 3d content stuff for like professional video production then you'd be wise to make an investment in this level of macbook pro it's otherwise it's and basically looking at all of the pros and cons of 
this one versus the MacBook Air that came out the year before. I'm actually going to now sell the MacBook Air I have, the 8 gigabyte version, and just buy one with 16 gigabytes of memory instead, because that's the the difference that will make my computer problem my my computer usability improve is having more memory. Everything else they've added to the to the you know, to the feature list is completely wasted on me, frankly. I mean, <laughs> HDR display, I mean, it's nice to have. I don't need it. The display on the MacBook Air is already amazing. Um, all the extra ports, yeah, it's a little bit nice, but there still aren't any USB-A ports, the ones that all of our gear still probably has. <laughs> so you still need a hub. Right. So what's the difference? I still got to plug a hub into it, right? Or, or adapters. So that doesn't really matter to me that much either. And and the MacBook Pro is because it's designed for higher output and needs to handle all that extra horsepower. It's got a bigger battery and a larger chassis, which means it's bigger and heavier. Now, the bigger battery is awesome. Nobody's arguing that not having a larger battery isn't good. But honestly, the battery that's in the MacBook Air 14 or 13 inch, to me, lasts pretty much the whole day without without any issues already and so really the next macbook for me is going to be another macbook air just with 16 gigs of memory and maybe a 512 gigabyte ssd if i'm feeling rich maybe a one terabyte ssd so <laughs> you really i mean if you guys got the scratch macbook pro m1 the pro chip and if you're really like a video geek the max chip is insane but it's far, far, far more performance and horsepower than you need. You're going to end up overspending for something you'll just probably never take advantage of. So yeah, that's my take. It was so tempting, but just doesn't make sense. I, I'm going to save five, $600 and just get a little bit more capable MacBook Air. Right. And as a voice actor, you know, I, I, you know, I've, I've got an old MacBook Pro from 2014 that still works great yeah it's a great computer yeah you know, the batteries is kind of questionable sometimes right. so it's time to that upgrade is replaceable yeah you i'm not gonna do it <laughs> yeah yeah but, uh but I, I i i think it's time for me to go for the uh the m1 uh air because super portable uh great performance and uh the fact that it keeps a charge all day is great because i have to keep going back in the house and plugging that one in to make sure that it's working yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's just, it's obviously look at them in person, compare them, try them out, but, uh, I'm still going to probably stick with the MacBook air for my, for my personal needs. Um, in terms of just other tech, uh, some related, some not to the voiceover world. I just had a little, there's just been a lot of things coming up in the last couple of years that are related to power supplies. What does that mean? That could be the little wall wart you plug into the wall. That could mean the component inside your device that makes it work. So like when you plug a USB cable into the computer, there's a little thing inside that box that allows it to power all the electronics. That's called the power supply. And that is going to make or break the quality of your equipment, how it sounds, how reliable it is, and how long it's going to last in the long run. And I just, thanks to a failed power supply, was able to acquire, it's literally sitting by my dumpster, a $400, 55-inch Roku-enabled TV, put a $60 power supply part in it and have it up and running. And now I have a beautiful TV that was like in flawless condition just because of a power supply. So if you run into a gear that just dies for no reason, um, doesn't turn on anymore, computers, TVs, anything, a lot of times that's a discrete thing called a power supply that are not that expensive to replace. And sometimes, in some cases, you can do it yourself. It's actually not scary. There's no soldering iron involved. It's just plugging in some cables. So just something to keep in mind. Look, the better the gear is, the better the sound, quali the sound quality. The longer it's going to last, it generally comes down to how good the power supply is. So yeah. keep you know, that in mind. That's, that's the thing here about in, here in LA. People throw out the weirdest stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, in my neighborhood, it's chairs, you know, you need a chair. Well, it's walk around the block around, you know, about garbage You'll day. You can pick one of the, although I did pick up a $900 JVC subwoofer that my neighbor was throwing out and he thought it was busted. And I like put a new power cord on it. It's like, 
All it needed was a power cord? It was just a power cord. Oh my gosh. Jackpot. Yeah. The missus is like, we need to get rid of this big silver tumor in the corner of the living room. Is there some other way we can do this? So (laughs) now I get to buy a really nice sound system for the TV. Oh, right. Awesome. But but although it did make a nice end table. Well, I'm I'm impressed you were able to do that. I had a bigger subwoofer and all 5.1, you know, crazy surround system as well. Now it sits on a shelf in my office and it's been replaced with a Samsung uh, all-in-one system. So, now, you know, there is my <laughs> there's my my whole 5.1 system right up there <laughs> with the receiver. Uh, now it's just a, in the museum of retired technology. Um, other thing that just stood out this week, uh, if you're looking for a new mic boom, there's a million of them. Rode came out with a PSA 1 Plus which has a neoprene sleeve on it. Yes, that's right. It has a sleeve that slides over the so arm. So you go scuba diving with it? or I'm... Yeah, I guess I guess the idea is they won't make any noise because they're wrapped in neoprene. It's a very interesting idea. A lot of companies are making mic arms that don't need that. They thought that was an add-on that would be helpful. I just thought it was creative, and who knows if you need it or not, but it's out there. Um, and a little hack, I just showed you a second shot from another webcam. I have a secondary $30 webcam down here. And what I've done is I put it on an arm and I placed it right below the screen. And what the, the idea here is that if you're actually having a conversation with somebody, the theory is that if you size the screen correctly and line everything up the right way, you can, let's say you're doing coaching. Let's say I want it to look like I'm looking at Dan right now. I'm right now I'm looking into Dan's eyes. Does it look like I'm looking into the lens? Dan, does, does it look like I'm looking into the lens? Yeah, of course. It looks like you're eyes? looking right into it. So, so now my webcam is literally just floating right in front of the screen, and Dan's eyes are right above the lens of the webcam. So now I can have a eye contact conversation with somebody and still look like I'm looking at the webcam. This is a $30 webcam on a $20 arm on my desk. So 50 bucks. This is something anybody can do. And if you, if you feel like it's always awkward when you're being interviewed, interviewing somebody, being coached, whatever, and you never know whether you should be looking at their eyes, looking at the camera, whatever, here's a little, a little hack that did not cost that much money that you guys can try out in your own studio. And if you're wondering how I'm switching cameras, I'm just using an app right now called ManyCam. Dan's got a second camera. He's just switching it inside our video switcher right now. Um, but yeah, it... Can, most computers can handle multiple webcams and you can switch between them relatively easily. So anyway, if, if you guys, by the way, if you guys want to learn more tech stuff, I'm planning on producing more and more specific videos on specific topics, like really specific, like how do you set up the Personas Revelator IO24 for a voiceover studio or for webcasting? I'm going to start creating more videos like that. They're going to be over at vimeo.com slash GTT. Did I say two T's? GTT VOD. GTT VOD. That's where I'm going to have my videos. But if you have any ideas, you can go to George, the dot tech slash go to my tutorials on demand page slash toots dash on dash on demand. And there's a form on there and you can give me ideas. Like I want to learn about this. I've always wanted to learn about that. I need to know how to use this. Let me know what you guys want to learn and I want to be of service to you. Yeah. So Dan. Yes. You're going to talk about mic placement, which we can't overstate well, how yeah. incredibly important this is. Yeah. Well, as, as we, as we like to say every week, there are three, well, I now say 3.5 things that are really important uh, for your home studio. Of course, we always talk about acoustics, whether, you know, first off, is your room sound tight? So there's no noise coming in from the outside. And then there's acoustic treatment, which is the absorption and diffusion of sound. So you don't sound like you're in the Taj Mahal. Um, not that I've ever been in the Taj Mahal or know what it sounds like in there, but I imagine if you start yelling in there, one, people will look at you and two, there'll be quite an echo. Uh, but <laughs> that's really important. We always find that the acoustics of the room you work in is, is by far one of the most important things you can, you can do to make sure your sound is good. The other thing is mic placement, mic technique. And we talk about this a lot because a lot of people like, you know, they, 
one of my favorite things is, you know, why does it sound weird? Because you're talking into the front of the microphone, you know, and not, you know, or the top of the microphone, as opposed to the proper part of the microphone itself that is going to pick up your voice properly. I, I've been, I've been experimenting for years and really, and listening to other people in their studios and, and what it sounds like to get your mic technique right. My standard thing is have the mic upside down and in front of you about like that. So it's at about the bridge of your nose, the height of the bridge of your nose. You have all of this room underneath to put your copy behind and you don't need a pop screen. So you can go pump, 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 and you don't get any pulses. And even more importantly, it's out of sight. I mean, you can see it on the camera here, but it's out of my peripheral vision. So my copy is what I see, and I don't see the mic. I find that, especially people who are new, when they have a microphone in front of them, they have a tendency to talk a little louder, which is, you know, unless you're doing mm. animation or you're doing car commercials, you really don't want to be talking louder. You want to be talking in a conversational tone, and you want people to hear you the way other people hear you when you're having a conversation with them. So having the microphone at this height, at the height of your ears, the microphone will perceive you at the, the, the proper, the proper height and distance. And it sounds like you're talking to somebody else. And that's why I recommend that. Now, what I have seen a lot of people do is have a microphone on a mic stand on their desk. Not the best idea in the world, unless, of course, that's all you got. But let, let me demonstrate what happens. Now, here I am talking on this microphone. Is that, is that over-modulating at all, George? I think it's probably No, I think it's pretty. sounding normal. How, can you scratch the black mic so I can know it's the... Yep, it is on. Don't ever do that in the studio. <laughs> it's real important to mention that. Uh, yeah. Now, if you've got a if you've got a studio condenser mic, a lot of people are putting them on on mic stands on the desk. Not a good idea for a couple of reasons. Number one, vibrations will go through a desk. So if you've got your computer on the desk, even with the uh, the shock, shock mount on there, it's mm -hmm. going to the vibration is still going to come through the desk, and it's you're going to hear it. And it's been amazed. I've been amazed at how many times. I hear that and I see that in people's audio and I'm like, where's the mic? And they're like, well, it's on the desk. We'll get it off of there. Generally have a floor stand microphone stand or, you know, one of these boom arms like this that is connected to the wall and not the desk. So the vibrations from the desk don't go into it. It's also way more likely you're going to bump into it. If you talk with your hands, <laughs> a lot of voice actors gesticulate. It's, part of the acting process if it's on a stand in front of you or within that arm's reach chances are you're going to bump into that thing that's right and and a lot of people do but I, I think people need to understand the idea of the pickup pattern of the microphone uh it's you know, we see this pickup pattern thing you know in pictures and it's like this heart-shaped thing it's not a flat plane it is a hemisphere that literally surrounds the capsule of the mic. And if you address the mic straight on, it's important if you're a singer that you're really trying to get the subtleties of your voice, especially if you're, uh, you know, Billy, Billy, Billy Eilish, Eilish. Who does, does, doesn't, doesn't sing very loud at all. <laughs> the ASMR but, singer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, uh, but, so you can, there's, there's ways you can play with this. And if you don't have room to hang it upside down for the time being, one of the things you can do, this is one of my favorite things to do. Of course, you've got to turn the mic around. This is the other thing. Why does my voice sound so muffled? Because you're talking in the back of the mic. You're talking into the back of the mic. <laughs> and if you turn it around, suddenly you, you're talking again. You can talk underneath it this way. I mean, if you got a desk stand, you can raise it up a little higher and you can talk underneath the mic that way. And I can go Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers and there's no plosives. I can still talk over the, the top of it and Peter Piper, nothing there. I can talk over here and nothing. I can talk into the middle of the mic and you don't get plosives. But the second you start talking directly into 
the diaphragm, you're going to get that. So you might say, well, I just use a pop screen. No, you don't use a pop screen. Uh, despite what some people might say. Now, it's just my opinion. If you address the mic like this, you're going to get plosives and the pop screen eh, helps. It a does it bit. a little bit. It helps yeah. a little bit. You know, some people say, it. well, hold up a pen, see if that stops it. Yeah, that can do yeah. it too. But do you want to go through it's an entire 30 second spot with a pen in front of you? Or an audio book? Or an audio book. <laughs> <laughs> well, hadn't, yeah. hadn't thought about that one, but yeah. So I would say get the mic off of your your desk if you can and get it onto a uh, onto a a floor stand. I like using one with a metal uh, a metal disc on it as opposed to the tripod because I'm a klutz and I'll fall over it. And a lot of people don't have enough room to have the tripod there anyway. But if it's like too heavy or anything like that, you can always take a bag of sand or a, a, a gallon of water and put that on there and counterbalance it. Yeah. And or an it old weight great. plate from a from a barbell. Uh, that oh that works really well as well yeah. so uh that's that's the real key when it comes to uh mic technique um back to my mic can i can you tell i'm changing mics here and i just yeah, a little I prefer bit. the vo1a a little bit more do you okay i do They're actually too. not that far off from each other they actually compare very favorably yeah but this is the harlan hogan vo1a that we use here is the official voiceover body shop microphone uh, in this studio. And as you can hear, it picks me up as I exist. And that's the most important thing. Uh, you want people to hear you as you exist. And that's what they're hiring you for. You're not, the idea is not to sound great. It's to sound like you. So do as I say or not. That's the way I look at it. And the people who do that all sound as good as I do. If you think I sound good, but that's a whole nother story. Um, Dan, I know they think you sound good. Cause when I, when I, every time I, I read the comments on our microphone shootout videos, <laughs> there's always video, a few comments like, well, your voice is awesome. That voice is amazing. Like you always get a lot of good compliments yeah. <laughs> from strangers. Glad, <laughs> glad to hear that. I want to hear that from the clients who want to hire. That's right. That, that's that's, that's right. the most important thing. Yep. Uh, anyway. Uh, we Should want we your on? questions, you know, and I think we've got a couple coming up here. It, all you have to do, you still got plenty of time, go into the chat room, whether you're on Facebook or you're on, uh, uh, YouTube and go into the chats in the side there or underneath or wherever it is, the chats are write your question. If you've got a specific question about your home voiceover studio or voiceover technology, put it in there and George and I will be thrilled to answer it. And we'll get to those mm -hmm. right after these important messages. We'll be right back. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. As voice actors, we need to hear the clear, transparent, and honest sound of our voices. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 provide both that accurate transparent sound with enhanced mid-range audio, less bass, and the creature comforts voice workers deserve. Clearly different from traditional studio headphones, the upper mids and highs are clear as a bell, no muffling or cross-bleeding between frequencies. Like a pair of studio monitors, the low is there, but at the same level as the rest of the spectrum. They're comfortable like no other phones I've worn. That's because Harlan used actual leather for the pads. It's like putting on a pair of leather gloves for your ears. They're also very light for their size, as Harlan made them from aluminum instead of plastic. The headband is flexible like a watch band, and the plug comes out for walking away. Get the only headphones designed for VO. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 for just $149 with free shipping from voiceoveressentials.com. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. 
It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Well, it's time to talk about Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, the tool you need to have in your voiceover toolbox if you're getting ready to work with the bigger gigs, the ones that pay more. And why do the gigs that use Source Connect tend to pay more? It's because those projects have a larger production budget. That means they're hiring not just you, a performer, but they may have several performers. They're going to have a recording studio at the other end that they're also paying to record you. And the client may actually physically be there. They might be remote, who knows. But the bottom line is the client wants to see the sausage being made. They want to hear it happening real time. And they want to confirm that what's been recorded works for their brand. And they want to do that all in real time sort of really the traditional way that this kind of work was done collaboratively, all physically in the same room. But now a source connect, the actor can be any place. And actually even the engineer can be any place. There's so much that can be done remotely now with all the different tools from source elements, but as voice actors, source connect standard, that's the tool you want to focus your energy on. If you want a little help getting it up and running, if it's a little intimidating when you head over to Source Elements website, trying to figure out what, what to do at source-elements.com, don't worry. They're making some real improvements to their signup process. They are working right now on improving the onboarding. But in the meantime, George the dot tech slash SC will give you a little leg up on some of the processes to get signed up. But this is the tool you need to get. Be ready and have a studio that sounds up to par. When you have all that together, you need Source Connect. Anyway, we'll be right back and we'll be heading directly into your questions right after this bumper. You're still watching VOBS? <laughs> <laughs> and Apparently <we> so. Are, <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. So straightforward. Yeah. So dead, uh, Yeah. We got to get a few new bumpers. You know, as as we I move know. into the next year, like, can you believe it's like almost Thanksgiving? No, no, I can't believe that. I can't believe that either. <laughs> My goodness. Where did this year go? And there's some years you're like, you know, this year could go by a little faster. This, this was hurry up, hurry up. Slow down, slow down, slow down. No, no, okay. <laughs> All right. What do we got in questions here tonight? Uh, starting off with the one and only Jeff Holman, who gets all the other questions in here. That's right. He says, I saw on your Vanguard review video that you were using the personas Reva revelator 10, or is it IO 24? Yeah, it's 24. actually IO. Yeah. 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 You had a myriad of effects dialed in to reduce the jet noises, etc. cetera. <laughs> yeah. can, can you set up those effects for a client who has a relevator IO 24, much like you would build a stack for them. I imagine that's probably how that thing's designed. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it's it's controversial at best to <laughs> add a lot of front end processing to a voiceover actor's setup. Um, but and you know, honestly, one of the things that I think the Revelator doesn't do that well is noise reduction because it has a gate and the gate has an expander mode, but neither of them are that smooth in the way that they open and close. Let me let me give you an example. When I breathe. You hear how sometimes it kind of chops the breath up. It mm -hmm. doesn't have like a natural sound. It's like, like that. It's mm -hmm. that's the, that's the gate thing opening and closing in a very sort of chattery kind of way. It's very difficult to get it to not do that. And, and because it doesn't have something called a ratio control, the ratio control is what most better expanders are going to have, which let you really gradually ramp in that noise reduction or the drop in the room tone. Um, and that's, I think it's, it's one deficient thing. I need someone from personas to show me the right way to use it. Maybe they're going, oh, well you just missed this setting. 
but I haven't found out how to get it to work. No, uh, it's probably smooth. it's ten times down the menu, which is maybe. I mean, you know, the the beauty of it is really everything is pretty much right out in front and center. They don't bury too much into deep, deep, deep menus, which I like. Um, but it's it's probably its weakest feature, really, is is its noise gate thing. Um, but other than that, I love I'm I'm a, I love it. I love that I can have this iPad running the UC control app. Uh, sitting right next to me on my desk and I don't, I don't miss having a physical mixer anymore because I essentially have one. Um, everything I want to do is right here on the screen. And as long as it's plugged into power, the, the iPad stays on all the time. It's, it's always ready to go and make, make adjustments. So for $200, the thing it's still impressing me. And, and yes, very, very long answer to a short question. I can set those processing settings up for you. Or more importantly, set up all the other bells and whistles, the mix minuses and the routing. So you can do Zoom sessions and be coached or coach people or play back your takes to the talent or the client. I, we can, I can set all that up so it just works. Yeah. Make it easy. So it's like doop, doop, doop. And, and you know, and I think I that's try. Yeah. I mean, we talk about how, how technology perhaps, perhaps we've reached a plateau of you know so there's like nothing new well you look at something like like the 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 revelator there or revelator what, what is it called the rev Re revelator like it's Re a revealing oh the, re the revel reveal thing the revelator i don't know the name is not the best ever, <laughs> that's the they could have come up yeah. with something much better yeah. but the, the revelator yeah it's it's they're taking that something that's in the price point of like an ssl2 or you know just a little bit more than like a scarlet 2i2 and adding a boatload of features which can be a pro and a con. <laughs> Just ask Martha Khan, <laughs> who I set this up for. She's had a heck of a process of learning it and getting accustomed to the settings. Because the thing is, it's not just the settings in the revelator that have to be right. The settings in all of the applications you're using also have to be correct. So right. what's, what your, what's your Mac system sound output setting? What is your input mic and speaker set to in Zoom and in Skype and everything else? What is it set to in Adobe Audition? All of them have to be set correctly. And if they forget their settings or something like that happens, things go haywire. So yeah. you need like a little pre-flight checklist to make sure it's all working. All righty. Question from YouTube from Jim McNicholas. I love this question <laughs> because <laughs> you and I are going to have the same answer and we're going to blurt it out at the same time. Is tuning a room an art or is there a scientific way to do it? It's art. an art. No it's, question. It's both. Okay, it's both. But well, it, for us, it's an art. I think for, for us, it's yeah. an art. Well, we, we, the, the fascinating thing about the human brain is that the calculations that we do that we don't know about. You know, I, I remember watching, I think it was like, uh, maybe maybe you're too young to remember the amazing Hemo from, it was an old Disney film. It was a science film from the, no. the late 50s. No. But it explained how if you're out in left field and somebody hits a, hits a pitch, you hear it, you see it, and it, you're able to calculate the arc so you can catch it. It's all math, but I suck at math, but you know, it's like, doing all that in the background. It's doing it. And so when you and I walk into a room or we're listening to somebody, you know, somebody sends us some audio, it's like, we can hear if there's a node somewhere. We can hear, you know, what if it's too dead, if it's too lively, if there's some bass reflex in there. We trust our ears because we know what it's supposed to sound like. Uh, and therefore, that I think from the experience that we have, to me, it's an art. Uh, you know, scientifically, I mean, we can measure stuff. I mean, you can look at a spectrogram, you can say, you know, if you clap your hands and you know how much how long does it take for the reflection to come back which is measured in milliseconds but i look at the calculations that these acousticians use you know i mean i know oralex has a thing where they're like well let's recommend how much foam you're going to use and that sort of thing i have some and, really intimidating books over here on this bookshelf <laughs> it's like, and I have you read those them. books or do you have, have them just to impress people when you're doing a zoom session you know every couple of years i buy another book on acoustics thinking that i'm going to get smarter and i just feel dumber because i <laughs> it is like 97 percent physics and math equations you know 
it's, and it's all algebra. I didn't do well in algebra. It's 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 a lot of math. And 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 so is it science or art? There are scientific methods to solving acoustics issues. They're in these books. The acousticians that Dan mentioned will use them. They'll help calculate rooms. And I know guys that can do this. The problem is when the room gets too small, the the formulas don't work anymore. And and or they end up putting so much treatment into that small room that guess what? There's no room for you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that happened recently with a client of mine. The room was going to be like four by six feet, but the walls were going to be eight inches thick of acoustic treatment. So it ended up having just enough room for a chair inside the booth and not much else. But you couldn't and sit on the chair. <laughs> yeah. So yes, acoustically and technically, scientifically, it would have been great sounding, but realistically, usability wise, it would have been a pain in the neck or not workable at all. So yes, that's why we will, I think what we do now is so much more art and experimentation and lot and less straight up science because you can't find a book off of a shelf that shows formulas and explains mathematically and acoustically how to make a small walk-in closet or a whisper room or a studio bricks sound good. Just ain't in the books. Right. It takes a lot of experimentation. You get, you got to hear it. If you know what it's supposed to sound like, it's actually pretty easy, but very few people know that because they only know their own studio. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, they're like, they don't know what a note is or they don't know what bass reflex is or something like that. We hear a, a, a sample of audio. We know just like that, pretty much what's going We can usually tell the size of the room, the shape of the room, all those sorts of things. I so. think you can get ear blind to your own sound and your own studio too. Absolutely. Um, you might have deficiencies in your studio, but you're so accustomed to the way they sound, or maybe you've come up with schemes to mask them that, you know, they, it, it works. You get away with it. And then somebody else hears it out of context, one of us, and we're going to hear some of the, the flaws in that space. So. Right. Also, your your brain will tune out a lot of monotonous tones that are in your, you know, oh, in your room tone definitely. and you don't hear them. I mean, they're there. I mean, if you listen, I hear the refrigerator or something along those lines, mm -hmm. you don't hear that. This guy doesn't have a brain. It hears it. We're going to hear it because we don't live in your space. So that's part of the skill here. A mm -hmm. uh, question from hungry boy, George, you want to take that? Sure. And he says, this is quick. So let's see. Uh, how high is the gain on Dan's mic right now asking on the Harlan Hogan? So oh. how many DB of gain is your Rodecaster pro settings for that mic? Well, it's, you know, it's right about there. <laughs> it's, you know, the, that's your I, fader. That's my fader for this. You know, click, and the, I can... click on the one button and go to settings and see if we can see the actual, the gain display on the screen. There, there it go. is. See that 32. That's, that's what and it I, is. On, on the I don't know why it doesn't say 32 dB. I'm assuming that 32 means 32 dB of gain. That's, that's what it says. I'm not 100% sure, but it says 32. So there you yeah, go. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> do I adjust it much? No, I actually, I'll, I am a real set it and forget it kind of person. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, I know what my volume of my voice is, uh, you know, but then again, I'll record something and I'm like, um, I know I'm going to be a little louder so I will back off the volume on the mic just a little bit so it doesn't overmodulate. But I usually talk about like that, and that's how I do that. And, you know, one of the reasons I like this microphone, it's very flat, and I don't have to worry about any any coloration from it at all. That mic sounds dangerously similar to a U87. I've done a, I did a shootout of this mic and a U87 at Voice Tracks West. 15 years ago, a long time ago, um, the, uh, the, the VO, the Harlan Hogan VO1A has a little bit more of a top end brightness to it, a little bit more crisp top end, but the mid range and most everything else was almost indistinguishable. Yeah. It was pretty surprising. Right. And the fact of the matter is, I don't believe there's an engineer out there listening to somebody in their specific space that they're in that can tell what microphone it is, unless it's a really yeah. crappy microphone. I so I, I, I tend to find that this discussion about, you know, what's the best microphone for voiceover is, is like I said, usually the one you got, unless you have a crappy one. 
I had a client who's been doing some, I think an animation project or something. I think it's animation. Don't, don't correct me if I, well, he's not listening. Well, if he's listening, <laughs> he, he doesn't care. Oh, well. But um, <laughs> anyway, he was doing this job month after month and he was using, um, he was using a different microphone than, than, than the one that they wanted him to use. And they were like, it sounds great. And then out of the blue, they said, hey, we would really love to start doing all your sessions on Zoom or some video chat program. Mm -hmm. So now they had to see what microphone he was using. <laughs> so he was like, damn it. <laughs> so he ended up buying the U87. Oh, jeez. <laughs> because <laughs> he didn't want to fake it anymore yeah. but uh it's just you know the point was is he was doing the job and having no problems whatsoever right. using a 416 yeah you know you can always just like write u87 on the front of it and, <laughs> and you know, with nail polish or something yeah uh carl gillette carl. asks uh in general and generally speaking is a shotgun mic better a better choice for a small space than a large diameter condenser to help with a boxy sound I don't think that the a shotgun mic has anything to do with the boxy sound. That's a little bit more of an acoustical situation and the shape of the room and, and yeah. things like that. If it's boxy sounding, a 416 or a shotgun mic will still pick up on that boxiness in a lot of cases. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, a 416 or any shotgun mic is a lot more directional. Uh, you know, and I think sometimes if you got a bit of that kind of a sound, you can always play with the direction of the mic to see, you know, how the room responds, you know, depending on, again, we were talking mm -hmm. about mic placement here. Um, you know, I think, you know, one of the things I failed to mention when we were talking about mic placement is distance. Yeah. Uh, proximity. I mean, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you've made the very astute observation that in a very small booth, get it down to about a fist away. And the larger the room, the farther away you should be from the mic. You know, yeah, I've, now, I've now got here. it down to fist, thumbs up, fist and mahalo. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. In a larger room, you have more luxury of space. And because you've got more space around you and a longer distance to any one wall or ceiling, you now can have a longer play area around or a, a larger play area around, around your mic. Um, but small spaces don't allow that. To yep. get, get away with that yeah. so and we have um, seen some pretty small spaces out there yeah what he what he what he didn't mention was what kind of large diameter condenser pickup pattern right i think yeah. people get all those terms kind of commingled with a cardioid microphone right and they can be cardioid figure eight omni and i found out a figure eight mic if you just happen to have a mic with switchable patterns is interesting to experiment with in a small boxy space Sometimes it negates a lot of that side wall, parallel wall resonant issues. Um, and it's worth experimenting with. So if you do have that capability, experiment. You might be surprised how much better it ends up sounding. Yeah. Sometimes it's people get confused by all the switches they might have on their microphones. You know, like you a Kenny 100 s Right. It'll have a, a polar pattern thing on. Of course, the more patterns are the more expensive the mic. But yeah. it also has a, a a pad on it, like a 10 dB pad, or some have a 10 or a 20 dB pad. Yeah. Um, you know, and those should probably, you know, depending on the, on where you are, you don't want to overplay. I generally like turn those off, you know, yeah. unless start you're trying to play with the, the patterns. Start with your upside down cardioid harp shape first, you know, put it on zero pad and flat high pass. Right. And then if you hit record and you see a lot of, wave garbage switch it to the slopey line and turn on the high pass and then that's your next step so all righty deanna anthony asks she says i have a personas pd70 that's a microphone i've never looked it up PD's. right now must be a broadcast mic must be with a triton fethead phantom it is a broadcast these. mic okay it is well, called that's... the personas pd70 broadcast dynamic microphone okay which somebody sold you for voiceover i'm assuming yeah. don't don't use you know and then they they'll they'll say use a triton fethead or a uh a cloud, a cloud lifter. lifter to to raise up the gain so you know the fact of the matter is if you're making if you're raising the gain it's not going to stop any background noise it's just going to make the mic more sensitive uh so it's not really worth it although 
These are great for playing with ribbon microphones, as is the, the Triton Fethead, which comes in this nice little cylinder that I keep in my desk and hardly ever use. Um, she was looking at preamps. Right. Didn't I'd like to add that? a preamp and was looking at the Personas 2 Pre V2. I wondered if there is there were any other preamp choices that might work well with my current equipment. Thank you. No. Honestly, <laughs> more gear in your signal chain will not make more better sounding stuff. So well said. I've, I've dealt with a lot of people with a insert dynamic mic brand here, insert booster plug a, a jig thing here, insert cheap power preamp thing box here and scarlet right i've exactly. heard so many you might both of them heard so many combinations and the first thing i do is take that power preamp power that strip thing out of the box starts with rhymes with maybe x and um <laughs> and uh take that out of there now let's hear what it sounds like okay now let's hear what it sounds like without that other booster thing now let's hear what it sounds and sometimes <laughs> Just the mic and the interface is the best sounding. The level right. might be low, but it might still have the cleanest overall sound. Right. So boosting and boosting and adding all this stuff to a very, very inexpensive dynamic mic with a low output, not the place to spend money. The, you should really be replacing it with the right type of mic yeah. for voiceover. Why, why, why do you think there's so many people using these dynamic mics? I mean, we see singers using them now. I know I see a lot of singers, including the boss using, uh, uh you know, an electro voice RE20 or, uh, the, uh, the SM seven B they're great for singers because singers are loud. I'm guessing they're watching a lot of YouTube and podcast production and a yeah. lot of podcasts are on YouTube. And they're seeing all these mics being used. They're seeing broadcaster mics and they're confusing that with voice acting recording, which really is a different kind of animal with voiceover. It's all about very subtle aspects of the sound of the voice. And we need a very sensitive microphone to pick that up properly. Right. Broadcast is about shouting into the mic or not shouting, but really kind of eating the mic and really getting your word out there and getting people's That's attention. Right. That's what broadcast is about. And for that, you need a different kind of mic. So. Right. But not, not for voiceover, not for conversational voiceover. We don't talk half an inch from people's eardrums. Right. Doesn't sound natural. Right. Last question. This is a great subjective question. <laughs> we love those. <laughs> yeah. From Tony Hoover on YouTube says, if someone's on a very limited budget, what would you consider to be a wiser financial investment? Soundproofing? Or is it acoustic treatment? Glad you recognize the difference because a lot yeah. of people don't. What would be a better, a wiser financial? Well, it depends on how noisy is the room you're in. I think. Yeah. The first I mean, question. if your room is so noisy that you would need to spend money on soundproofing to make it usable, you're, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be happy. <laughs> you're not going to get a good product. You, you have to have acoustic treatment squared away first, always. Right. But that's your number one priority is good sounding acoustic environment. Um, but if you're starting out with a space so noisy that this is even a, this is even a debate up for debate, which one do you start with? Then it's probably not going to work out. Um, if you can only spend money on one, it's not going to work out because you're, if you've spent all your blue, all your money on soundproofing, you're not going to have anything left for acoustic treatment. It's still going to sound pretty bad. So yeah. that's yeah. a toughie. <laughs> I don't think you can have one. I don't think you can have, you definitely can't get a professional sounding recording without acoustic treatment. No question. But you can get away with a lot of noise reduction and some tricky tools and processes used Just in the right bit. hands right. to mask noises, rumbles, and other noises. Um, so yeah, there's my complicated answer to your, I, I make sense. Simple question. <laughs> yeah. Last question from J Horace Black. Hey, George and Dan, that's us. Have you had much experience with the mic that Mara Juno uses? That can be a 416 Neumann and other mics with the change of a switch. Probably talking about the sphere 20, the, the, you know, that has mic modeling and stuff like that. Yeah. The probably the Townsend labs sphere L 22. Yeah. Which we've 
seen at the trade shows. We've talked about it. We've seen them at NAMM. Why do I've people want to use all them. these different mics? It's not going to change the way they read Have copy. Have you ever seen a woman's makeup kit? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Where there's like 47 different shades of eyeshadow? There's your answer. Yeah. Yeah. It's... <laughs> you just, people just can't help but try different things and what, and get different, you know, they just, they can't help it. Um, they want to be able to have different tools and different, you know, creativity. And in the case of Mara, okay, she's earned it, right? Yeah. I mean, she's a, a very successful voice actor. And she also happens to be partnered to Jordan a massive Reynolds. audio geek. <laughs> Who will Jordan be with Reynolds. us in a couple of weeks. So. That's right. You could ask him directly what he thinks of that mic. Um, but clearly he had some influence over that decision, I'm sure. Um, if in the right hands, it's an amazing thing. Otherwise, it's unneeded, unneededly, unneededly? Is that a word? Go for it. It's over. It's just <laughs> bulky. It's heavy. It's complicated. It's got two cables coming out of it that you have to have two preamps. There's, there's a lot of baggage that comes along with using that microphone. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't recommend it for everybody, but, uh, if you've already got a 416 and you're thinking about buying a U87, this is about half the price and you're getting a U87. Now, Chris, my friends over at Neumann, they'd be pretty pissed at me for saying that there's no such thing as a fake Neumann. But, um, if you, if you're on a budget and you want to have a few microphones at your disposal, cause you do a lot of different kinds of work or your producer and you need to be able to have those different tools at your disposal. It's a cost effective way to, to do that. All right. As always, Mr. Whittem, a pleasure to have these conversations with you. And always fun. It's, we love getting the questions. So send us more. You can send us questions too. If you just send them into the guys at VOBS.TV and we'll be happy to answer them. Yeah. I even have a button that shows that if I can find there it. There it is. The guys at VOBS.TV. Nicely done. All right. We're going to come back and say goodbye and tell you what's coming up next on this show right after these important messages. This is. This is Ariana Ratner and you're enjoying voiceover body shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Well, hello there. As voice actors, we need to hear the clear transparency. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hi, here I am in my normal workspace with a question. What's the biggest challenge you have with voiceover? What's been the puzzle you need to solve? The question you need answered. Well, David H. Lawrence the 17th and the coaching team at VOHeroes.com want to know. They're creating new courses and training, and they want to know what you need most. And it's easy to let them know. Just drop an email to david at voheroes.com. That's david at voheroes.com. And let him know what you'd like to know. Is it tech-oriented? Is it auditioning? Is it about booking more work, finding an agent, podcasting, audiobooks, performance questions? Whatever it is that keeps you up at night, that makes you scratch your head, or what you've always wanted to know about success in VO, email David and ask. The email address again is david at voheroes.com. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Alas Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. Are we here? All right. All right. All right. It wasn't a train wreck. <laughs> It was, it was not like the early days of eWabs 
it was not every week it's Apollo 13. No, it was pretty good overall. I'd say. <laughs> it's like we're fighting over who's going to control what shot. <laughs> But that's the fun of it uh, all. Yeah, live broadcast. That's why we do it live. So it's spontaneous and unscripted, and and that's what makes it fun. And it's always energy fun doing it with you, Mr. Whitham. Uh, let's see here. Next week on this very show, an audio roundtable? masters roundtable. Me, George, Cliff Zellman, Uncle Roy, Jordan Reynolds. And Tim Friedlander Tim will be confirmed. joining us. Yes, we're going to. So, have Tim if too. you got lots of great questions and you want lots of different opinions, although I think generally we agree on almost everything. Well, maybe Tim has some different ideas because he's a musician, and he's you know got these. Well, he's, Cliff he's, produces car commercials, so that's right. So, he has some look, of his own things. Uncle Roy is an Emmy-winning desi- uh, 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 audio designer for the networks and stuff, and he's these are talented people. And we just talked about Jordan a few minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, tune in for that next week on this very show. We may have enough for two shows, which will take us past Thanksgiving, and I can do the other things that I need to do. Um, let's see here. Who are our donors this week? We have Shauna Pennington Baird. Oh, yes, I Con Productions, our good friend Martha Con, Don Griffith, Stephen Chandler, Sandra Manwiller, Robert Leadham, who asked a question tonight. Thank and you. and Uncle Roy's Uncle Roy Antland, Antland Productions Antland Productions. All righty. Um, once again, if you want help with your home studio, you've come to the right place because George and I do that. If you want to talk to George, you go over to George the dot tech. tech. Yeah, and if you'd like to work with me, yeah, it, I know it's a hard choice. Go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and I'll be happy to uh, help you out. Uh, our thanks tonight to Jeff Holman, uh, who was in the chat room, got us all those questions and helped us out and Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. We appreciate that. Well, you know, something when it comes down to some really important things, if it sounds good, it is good. And that's the bottom line, my friends. Anyway, I'm Dan Leonard and I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover body shop or V O B. Yes. Yes. Tech, talk. Tech, talk. Tech, tech talk tech talk tech talk tech talk we will see you next week with the audio masters roundtable make sure you guys for that one you're gonna love it wait that's not the theme music is it no we got we have to use this one All right. I'll tell you, it's a lot with because of all the features hide themselves on the side. Right. It'd be cool if there was.